diary of fate. Fate plays no favorite. It could happen to you. Book 31, page 512. Yes, here it is. On this page, every detail in the last days of an actor named Keith Raymond. Days that could have been full and bright, were it not for your insatiable ambition. Because that led you to a decision for evil. And now, as the ledger of your life lies open before me, I, fate, look ahead to a single awful instant. Here, this is the file copy. Look, Raymond, can't I we get you to shut up? Yes, Ross. What a sensational account. Too bad you're not going to live to broadcast. What? Keith, you're wrong. Wait. Wait, don't let me get away with it. I... Yes. In the numbered days of Chief Raymond, a life was taken. But then I, fate, intervened. And because of a little thing, a grain of sand... Keith Raymond now stands condemned to death. But mark well my words, you who listen, for fate is not a conspirator in evil. In a moment I will read again from the diary of fate. Before the unusual story of Keith Raymond, here is our announcer. Everyday trivia are the tools with which I, fate, mold your destiny. Remember, Keith Raymond, how it all started? You were in your dressing room following a last performance in Chicago. You were packing and listening to a broadcast by Ronald Roth, a well-known radio commentator. Who is it? Me, Josh. Oh, I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Well, what... Oh. Well, that is, uh... What can I do for you? It's hard to say. We're strangers. For are we? Seems to me we've met before. Yes, I, I believe we have. Wasn't it that, uh, that press party at the Lancet? Oh, yes, yes, uh -huh. that's it. Tell me, is Albert in? Albert? Oh, Albert Winston. Yes, I was thinking. Because oh. it's really quite simple. Either the man's in or he's out. Now, this is... <laughs> well, that's hard to tell from here. You see, Albert Winston's dressing room is across the hall. Across the hall? Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is room three, isn't it? How no. stupid of me. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Mr. Raymond. Huh? Yes, yes. Keith Raymond. Uh, Sorry to say that I, I've forgotten your name. Uh, look, I was listening to Ronald Roth. I want to catch the guy out of his broadcast. Come in for more? Oh, I understand. I think I will. Believe me, I don't usually listen to these radio reporters. I was told today that Roth is going to have some word about the producer, Eugene Vale. <laughs> you know actor. Now, don't apologize, please. I have an interest in Eugene Vale myself. the show tonight, and it wasn't bad at all. And you were very good. Oh, thank you. Oh, believe me, if I just had a crack at something... No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm an awful bore when I start to talk theater. Well, in that case, I'll change the topic. My name's Dorothy. I like your look. And I'm so 
What? <laughs> oh. Okay, it's a date, Dorothy. That's a pretty name. How does the rest of it go? Date. D A L E. Date? You're not Eugene Vale's daughter. No, dear boy. No. <laughs> I'm not Eugene Vale's daughter. I'm his wife. Yes, Chief Raymond. Because of a little thing. A mistaken room number. We met the attractive Dorothy Vale. A woman whose husband's influence could further your career. You worked hard to make sure that your first evening with her was a success. And as the days turned into weeks, your meetings became more and more frequent. A month later, as you and Dorothy sped across a remote lake in a motorboat, you knew that you had played your part well. Mrs. Eugene Vale was in love with you. Oh, this is certainly a glorious day, Dorothy. Yes, it is. It's lovely. Oh, now, why so glum, Dorothy, huh? Dorothy, what is it? It's Eugene. He'll be here in the morning, please. What? Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, no. Have that again. I had a wire last night. Eugene is coming here to sign his new leading man for Beyond Tomorrow. Oh. Who was it, Dorothy? Whom did he select? Oh, some newcomer. Young fellow named, uh, Let me see. Hmm? Keith Raymond. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> darling, you're kidding me. No, it's not true. Oh, it's true, all right. Really? I was going to tell you at dinner tonight. Oh, darling. but you couldn't wait. Oh, <laughs> Dorothy, Dorothy, darling, how'd you do it? It was easy. My husband trusts my judgment, see. But, well, he, he doesn't know anything about us, does he? Oh, of course not. Eugene is a jealous man, my dear. I simply told him that I saw you perform. I thought you were wonderful. There's probably a wire from him. Mr. Oh, right darling, I, I, I can't get over this. I don't know what to say. Try our love. I do love you, darling. Yes, Keith Raymond. As long as Dorothy Vale could get the lead for you in her husband's play, you would tell her that you loved her. When you returned to your hotel in Chicago, you found the anticipated wire. And the next morning, you were standing before Eugene Vale, reading the closing lines of the play. I need say no more, Catherine, you understand. By tomorrow, I'll be done. And beyond tomorrow? <laughs> beyond tomorrow, there's only dust, remember? Goodbye, Captain. Splendid. Splendid, my boy. A perfect reading. Oh, you're, you're satisfied, Mr. Vale? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's an understatement, Raymond. Uh, come in. Good morning, darling. I hate to interrupt. The fence has been killing me. That's the verdict. Dorothy, you're a godsend. He's great in the part. By the way, do you two men? Oh, no. I've never been closer to Mr. Raymond than second row since. Mm. Well, darling, this is our new star, Mr. Raymond. He's my wife, Dorothy. How do you do, Mr. Fale? Hello. You do a little less formality. We're going to be... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Who? Oh, it's you, Grant. No, I don't. And what's more, I never will have a part for you, and that's final. Great Charles Brandt, Idaho's gift, Broadway. He's a fine actor. One of the best. Well, maybe so, Mr. Raymond, but Mr. Charles Brandt has big ideas. He wants everything in sight. And that seems to include my wife. Your wife? Yeah. Mark my words, Raymond. I made Charles Brandt the star he is today. I'll break him. I'll break him if it's the last thing I ever do. Even as Eugene Vale spoke, you made up your mind to stay away from Dark. But you found that was easier to plan than do. For you had convinced her that you were deeply in love with her. And after two days of avoiding Dorothy, you were unable to put her off any longer. It was Saturday morning when you met by arrangement on a suburban bridal path. 
sorry I'm late, oh, darling. Please. Traffic was terrible this morning. Oh, dear. Did you miss me? Yes, of course, dear. Here, let me help you down. Uh, thank you. Oh, it's a wonderful morning. Oh, Miss Keith, it's so good to be close to you. I know what you mean, Dorothy, but we've got to be careful. Mr. For how long, Keith? I can't take too much of it. Oh, dear, why don't we face this, Jean? Tell him that we No, no, we can't. Now, look, Dorothy. Jean Vale made a stop. With his help, I can go for it. But what about me? Do I fit into your plans anymore? Of course you do, dear. You always will. But just give me time. If I'm a success in this play, Hollywood is the next stop, and then I'm beyond Eugene Bay. But until then, Dorothy, we've got to be cautious. Yes, Keith Raymond. You had to be careful of Eugene Bale's jealousy when the play was in rehearsal. Your first line reading with your leading lady was held that afternoon. And although Eugene Bale was not present, you were still extremely self-conscious. For you knew that Ronald Ross, the notorious radio commentator, was standing in the nearby wings. You did not know that Dorothy, too, was watching from a shadowed corner. It was then, Keith Raymond, that I, fate, intervened. Well, Mr. Raymond, you read that scene beautifully. Why, thank you, Audrey. But I do have one suggestion. Oh, really? Here on page 10. Oh. According to the stage direction, you're supposed to turn on your heel and walk off quickly off your last line. And you suggest? Then you back off slowly as you talk. Oh. Well, that way I'll be on to the wings when I finish, huh? Let's see. Yes. Well, Catherine, I don't know how to state it, so I will... Mr. Raymond, that new board! What's out? Keith! Keith, darling! Keith! Oh, Keith, are you all right? Stupid fool forgot to nail that board down. Oh, my side. Oh, sweetheart, are you hurt? How are you doing? No, I'm not. Dorothy, what are you doing here? Well, Raymond, that was a nasty spill. Oh? Since you're not hurt badly, I can't say I'm sorry it happened. Oh, Mr. Ross. (laughs) Oh, I see what you mean. Kind of a publicity story, huh? Yeah. Yeah, a little publicity story. Sort of. Actually falls the loose board. (laughs) Not exactly, Mrs. Vale. More like actor falls for producer's wife. Huh? Well, so long, Keith, darling. Yes, Keith, it was a little thing. A loose board. But because of it, you tripped. And when the woman you pretended to love forgot herself, she publicly revealed the intimacy between the two of you. Now that intimacy might soon be known to millions of radio listeners and to Eugene Bale. Soon, Keith Raymond, I will write again under your name in the Diary of Fate. Before our story continues, here is a word on behalf of our sponsor. You stumbled harmlessly. But that insignificant incident revealed your secret relationship with Dorothy Vale. Revealed it to Ronald Ross, a notorious gossip commentator. But a few hours later, as you drove aimlessly around Chicago with Dorothy by your side, the question of what to do about it was foremost in your mind. All the stupid times to show emotion, darling. Ronald Ross practically breathing down on it. You must have been out of your mind. Oh, please, darling. I feel bad enough. And what do you suggest we do about it? I don't know. Ah. Oh, let's make a clean breast of the whole thing. Keith, please. We'll face the scene together. Tell him ourselves before Ross has a chance to just talk. Now, stop it, Dorothy. Don't be a fool. You know how he is. He'd ruin my career. He'd bar me from every theater in the country. Well, what of it? We could get along. I have money of my own. No, I won't do it. I will not sacrifice my career. Wait a minute. Of course, it's simple. 
Dorothy, there is a way out. How, Pete? What do you mean? It may cost us quite a lot, but it'll be cheap in the long run. Now, Ross must have a price. We'll bribe him. We'll buy him off, my dear. I'll drop you and get to his hotel right now. Good evening, Mr. Ross. Well, hello, Raymond. I had a hunch you'd be up here tonight. Oh? Want to invite me in? Door's open. Uh, I'm packing, so you'll forgive me if I don't whip up a cake or something. Going back to New York, eh? I can only stay a moment. Just long enough to ask you how much that story about me and Mrs. Vale is worth. <laughs> it's worth plenty, brother, plenty. So I'm prepared to offer you $5,000 if you'll kill that story. Huh. Five thousand? Well, that's peanuts, Raymond. But it'll make an interesting sidelight to the story when I tell my radio audience that you tried to bribe me. What? Oh, you dirty little... Take your hands off, off Raymond. You. I warned you. Damn. <laughs> you miserable ham, Raymond. You're a lousy actor and a lousy fighter. Ross, you'll pay... I'll kick... You hear me? I'll kill you. <laughs> First bribery, now threat. You're a great source of material. Tell me what you do, Raymond. This is in today tomorrow and hear my broadcast. I'm going to tell about this threat of my life right along with the rest of it. Or better yet, drop into my New York apartment around 7. I'll be working on the script then. You can help me with the details. I'll rock now the... get out of here. Your burning humiliation slowly gave way to fear, Keith. As you realize the consequences of your failure to bribe Ross. Finally, in desperation, you went to Dorothy. You realize what time it is? I've got to talk to you right now. It's impossible. Eugene's here. He's in shock. I tell you, I must talk to you, Dorothy. Things are worse than ever. Ross is. Wait a minute. Open the door. Oh, it's awful. Ross wouldn't be bribed. He insulted me. There was a fight. I threatened to kill him. And now he's going to broadcast the entire thing. Oh, Keith. Well, how can we stop There's it? There's only one thing we can do now. Dorothy, before Ronald Ross can make that broadcast, I'm going to kill him. Kill him? Oh, no, Keith. You'll never get away. You'll never catch him. quiet. Oh. Oh. Now, listen to me. Ross broadcast from New York at 8 tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to hire a private plane, fly to New York, and silence Ross for good and fly back. The whole thing will take eight hours. There's only one problem. What's that? An alibi for the time I'll be gone. I've got a line with to what order tomorrow from the place. I'll figure that out somewhere. Right. You better go in now. I'll call you in the morning. All right. Yes, I'm afraid. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. I hope so. Oh, well, my dear, I was beginning to worry. Where's he been? What happened to know, sir? He just told me. By the way, I just got a call from Audrey. She's ill. I'm sure. What's the matter? Such a line, that is. We're supposed to work lines with Raymond tomorrow. He needs it badly. Yes, I, I know. Look, I, uh, I hate that, my dear, but you're the only one I can count on. Would you mind working with him tomorrow? Feed him cue. No, that's all. Fine, darling. And really put him through his paces. Drive him until he really knows his line, even if it takes all night. Yes, Kate. It was a little thing. A trivial touch of Lauren Jack. Yet now Dorothy could supply the perfect alibi you need. The next morning, he went to a small independent airport. And under an assumed name, chartered a plane. At one o'clock, you were on your way to New York. Then, just an hour later, I, fate again, intervened. And another little thing happened. Don't worry, Mr. Smith. It's only two o'clock. We'll be there in plenty of time for your board meeting. Splendid. Timing is important in my business. Well, the trip takes a little over four hours, you said, eh? Yeah. That should put us into New York a few minutes after five. Yes, that'll do nicely, sir. What's that? Hmm? What's the matter? Uh, I don't know. Mr. Morton's dead. 
We're going to crash. Oh, hey, take it easy. We're going to crash. crash. Okay, take it easy. We just passed an emergency field. We've still got plenty of altitude oh, to make right. it. I'll set it down there. Take it easy. Great heavens, man. Now, can't you hurry? You've been working in that motor for a couple of hours. Doing the best I can. Is... Well, kind of important. Thing. Important? Oh, you couldn't possibly realize. Well, I found out what was wrong anyway. What? Grain of sand in the needle valve. Here, look at it. You mean that that little grain of sand? Yeah, yeah that's what did it. Oh. I'll have it back together in no time now, Mr. Smith. Sure hope we're not going to be too late. Yes, see? It was nothing more than a tiny grain of sand. Yet it completely upset your carefully planned schedule. Finally, the plane was repaired. And when the Manhattan skyline at last came into view, you glanced nervously at your watch for the hundredth time. It was seven o'clock. It took less than a half hour by taxi to get from the airport to Ross's apartment. Your watch said just 7.30 when you arrived. Without knocking, he tried his door and found it open. Who's there? Is someone... Tra- Raymond. Yes. Remember? You invited me to help with the sale. Yeah, I got here just in time. You can take your hat and coat off again, Ross. You're not going anywhere. What are you talking about? What are you... A gun. Now, Raymond, you're out of your mind. Shut up. I'll do the talking now. A certain speech in this little drama belongs to me. Give me that script there in your pocket. You'll never get away with this. Yes, I will. You? Know? Yeah, I thought of everything. Now the carbon copy on your pocket. Listen, Raymond, Come I... on, Ross, move! Okay. Okay. Here. Yeah. This is the file copy. Look, Raymond. I told we... you to shut up. This story separate. That's convenient. Remove these pages about Dorothy and me. No one will ever know they're gone. Yeah, it's quite a sensational account, Ross. Too bad you're not going to let the broadcast it. What? I think you're wrong. I just wait. Wait! You'll never get away with it. Shut up. You stared at his body lying at your feet. Then, as excited voices rose outside in the hall, you fled to the service entrance. A half hour later, you were seated again in the chartered plane. You were certain now that in a few short hours, you would be back in Chicago and safe. But my hand... The hand of fate is inexorable, Keith Raymond. As inexorable as the passing of time. Soon I will report again, but the final entry under your name in the diary of fate. Before the surprising conclusion of the story of Keith Raymond, here is our announcer. Keith Raymond, now you had nothing to worry about. Ronald Ross was dead. And you had a perfect alibi for all the time you were gone. When the plane landed in Chicago, you drove to your apartment where you knew Dorothy would be waiting. Here you are, Cabby. Keep the check. That's him. That's your man, Hello? officer. That's Keith Raffin. What? Mr. Vail, the... Dorothy, what... I'm Detective Lieutenant Seamus Hermicide, Raymond. You care to tell us where you've been just now? Hmm? Why, uh... We were rehearsing. I just <laughs> stepped out for a breath of air. And... Oh, Keith, it's no huh? use. Dorothy. Why did you come back here? Be quiet, Dorothy. Yes, she's right. You can wait here almost four hours. They found Ross's body, put out a call for you. For me? Yep. 
<laughs> Why me? I don't understand. There was no... Russ told the whole country you would threaten to kill him. He said if he turned up dead, you'd be the guy to get. There's a big story on his broadcast tonight. On... On his broadcast? Yes. Oh, no, no, that's impossible. Ross didn't broadcast tonight. He couldn't have. Huh? The program was on at 8 o'clock. It was only 7.30 when I... When you killed him? That's where you're wrong, Raymond. You forget to set your watch ahead when you change time zone. It's 7.30 Chicago time. It's 8.30 New York. So you didn't kill Ross before his broadcast. You killed him just after it. In the shock of your hopeless blunder, Keith, you confess the whole thing. Soon now you will be executed for murder. And Dorothy, through her disloyalty to her husband, faces divorce, scandal, and a life empty of all but bitterness and remorse. And now it is time to close the book. In the case of Keith Raymond, as in the cases of all mortals, I, fate, am but the instrument of a plan. A plan that even I cannot alter. For I am but the instrument. And the numberless little things that happen are the tools with which I work. Keith Raymond made a decision for evil. Then I, fate, intervened. And because of a little thing, a grain of sand, his timetable for murder was upset. And because of another little thing, because he forgot to set his watch ahead, he will pay for his crime with his life. Heed well the moral, you who listen. And remember, there is a page for you in the Diary of Fate. Our cast included Lorraine Tuttle, Larry Dobkin, George Neese, Herbert Litton, Ray Erlenborn, Clay Sanders, and Hal Sawyer. Diary of Fate is a Larry Finley production, transcribed in Hollywood. <laughs>